Espresso on the go is still here in Williamsburg at the AMTA regional event. We'll have a chance to catch up with Dr. Brian Kent. Dr. Kent, how are you doing today? I'm just doing wonderful. What a great venue to have such a nice event like it this. It seems to be, and the event's being run very well in my right. opinion. Um, you're going to give a speak, uh, talk later. Um, now you're with the Air Force Research Laboratory? Yes, I'm the uh, Chief Scientist of the Sensors Directorate with the Air Force Research Laboratory. It's the, in Dayton, Ohio. The Air Force Research Laboratory is the Air Force sole research agency that's uh, responsible for basic and applied research in aerospace systems, and we have uh, about uh, 10,000 employees in, uh, uh, spread out in 40 installations worldwide, most of them concentrated in uh, the states of uh, New Mexico and Albuquerque at uh, Kirkland, Eglin Air Force Base, and Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, as well as one uh, group of us in Rome, New York, our information directorate. Very, very good. Now, now you're giving a presentation this afternoon. Um, can you give us a little synopsis of that? Or sure. I we were uh, sensors directorate was asked to be involved with the uh, space shuttle program, uh, beginning actually with uh, the Columbia accident investigation. Uh, sensors had a uh, leading role in helping to determine uh, one of the root cause events, having to do with an item that came off in flight in space. Um, while the shuttle was in orbit, and we were able later to determine that that uh, item coming off was likely a piece of the broken heat shield. Uh, at the conclusion of the accident investigation, uh, the space shuttle program reorganized their program to try to implement the um, Columbia investigation results. As a part of that process, they formed the uh, Shuttle Engineering Integration Directorate, which brought together all the program elements of the shuttle under one single chief engineer whose uh, primary responsible was to make sure when the uh, shuttle returned to flying that it was done in the, uh, in the most judicious and safest manner that was uh, possible. In that uh, part of that process, one of the things that uh, NASA decided to do was to take a look at the actual, what we call the debris environment, or the things that could be shed from the shuttle during a normal ascent. Now, as you'll, one of the things that I talk about in my talk is that in any kind of a rocket or manned or unmanned, uh, there are a lot of things that normally happen. There are separation events with staging. There are certain explosive bolts that certain is that separate pieces, and it generates uh, uh, pieces of debris. Most of it intentional, but occasionally, sometimes unintentional. And of course, what the shuttle program was most interested in was what of those debris events might have something to do that was unexpected and could potentially compromise safety. So one of the things that they wanted to do was to improve their ability to see debris by using radar. Radar was particularly of interest to them because it can be used day or night in all weather, and that allowed them or enabled what we call night launch, which was necessary for them to complete the uh, shuttle manifest in the uh, construction of the International Space Station. As part of that process, we developed, uh, in conjunction with partners in the Navy and NASA, a, a suite of radar sensors that would actually accomplish this mission. And in 2005, while working with the SCNI office, uh, the chief engineer asked us a very interesting question, which was basically, uh, to paraphrase him, uh, how do I know when you turn these new radars on to watch out for my debris environment that you don't accidentally turn off a system on the shuttle that could be important, like, for instance, my engine computers? Yes. <laughs> so, so essentially, this generated the need to do a very unique test on the orbiter in order to assure us that the electrical systems would not be upset by these new radars. So what my paper is going to describe is actually the technique that we use to implement um, uh, this, this experiment, which uh, was used to determine how protected the shuttle systems were to external electromagnetic radiation. So what we did was we created, uh, we took a special research asset that has a programmable, very flexible radar system down to the Kennedy Space Center and parked it outside of one of the orbiter processing facilities where the orbiters were used to be prepared for flight. We inserted within the engine base uh, some special sensors and then ran some of the radar waveforms and measured the actual transmission loss or the amount of attenuation between the inside of the engine base where the computers were located and the exterior world. In the process of taking this data, we were able to ascertain that uh, the shuttle could safely be exposed to these new radar waveforms with uh, nearly about a hundred times uh, safety factor. And uh, this was one of the seven uh, top things that had to be completed in order to clear and allow the, the uh, shuttles to return to flight. 
So after the conclusion of the 2005 test, we actually flew uh, the first uh, mission. Um, was uh, STS-114 was the first return to flight. It was Discovery, the same vehicle that we had measured, uh, which was launched in July of 2005. And uh, the actual use of radar for tracking uh, debris separation events was hugely successful. Uh, so much so that uh, uh, the first two flights were meant to be a proof of concept. Uh, the SCNI uh, chief engineer decided that these things were so important that they were going to be employed throughout the remaining flight manifest. And, and so the, uh, what we called the NASA debris radar was used to support all 27 of the manned missions from return to flight to the last one, uh, last shuttle flight here in July of uh, 2011. That's, that's very interesting. Um, so, um, and I noticed this pin that you have here. Right. Um, that's right. got a story behind it as well, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it sure does. This is actually the uh, Shuttle Engineering and Integration uh, official uh, logo. If you actually look really closely at them, then you'll actually see a radar kind of down in the lower left corner of this. Uh, it turns out that on 2 March, which was just uh, last Friday, uh, the SCNI office called together all the parties that participated in this radar effort and presented each of the participants with this particular pin which was flown on the last shuttle mission uh, along with a certificate to our organization for our contribution for the safety of the space shuttle program. So uh, Centers Directorate was very honored to receive this award from the shuttle program uh, and we were delighted to be able to support manned return to flight and uh, doing so in a very safe manner. That's very impressive, very impressive. And uh, uh, your involvement with AMTA, did I understand that you were a past president? Of, yes, uh, I've, uh, I presented my first paper at AMTA in 1991 and was uh, an officer of the organization from 2001 to 2003. Uh, I ran the 2001 and 2002 technical symposium and in 2003 I was the president. Um, and during that period of time, we converted from all view graphs to all electronic presentations. <laughs> we converted to paper copies to online uh, uh, availability of our intellectual property. And even today, the AMTA.org website for members um, now has a completely searchable database of every paper that's ever been published. Uh, normally, if you look like an organization, IEEE, these kinds of academic license cost hundreds of dollars right. to be able to access previous work. Uh, but AMTA members actually get that for the price of an annual membership, so it's a great, great deal and a great resource, too. Very, very good. This is our first AMTA event. We're really, really impressed with the event. We're impressed with the caliber of the speakers, such as yourself, um, and we're really happy to be here. Right. And we're very glad that you had a chance to visit with us and right. uh, give us some of the oversight. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Steve.